Yo, black man. Hey, what's up? Oh man, you don't want to know, man. In fact, we better start with you for because I'm I'm I don't want to say I'm I don't want to use you know any uh, untoward words, but I guess the polite in semi polite society, I'd be saying I'm pissed. <laughs> what you pissed about? Don't about what I'm pissed about. Just tell me you get tell me some good news or some some tell, tell me your news first. I'll tell you what I'm pissed about because it ain't going away. Uh, I don't really have much. <laughs> I mean, hey, I just uh, did a drawing and enjoyed it. <laughs> I did this online class. Yeah, yeah. Um, with uh, friends and people that I don't even know. And we just go on Zoom and we look at these photo references and we draw. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so, well, let's, let's go back a little bit. So, now, I, when I met you, you was drawing that a long time ago. I don't know what's about 82, 83. I don't know what, what year. What year did I run into you guys? 84? Uh, I think you first ran into us like, um, well, you first saw me in 81. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you used to model for like um, the foundation class at SBA. <laughs> yeah. That, I, I, brought, I, brought so, I, mean, a... I didn't know you. But you know, <laughs> I drew you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got any of those drawings? They must be classic by now. But 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 you do know, I, I, they tell me I brought a whole generation of artists through to School of Visual Arts. Oh, I believe it. Because I was there for eight years. Yeah. For four years, you know, grinding, and the other four years, Vincent, Vincent said, "Nah, he's too valuable." So he would, <laughs> Vincent actually wouldn't let me model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because after a while you didn't. <laughs> no, I was I was like the emergency model. So what in other words, yeah. if I came to your class, I mean there was a problem. And everybody right. and because of my demeanor, let's put it that way, the, everybody was on pins and needles. The teachers, the, all the instructors, they all knew me. <laughs> everybody said, Oh no. If I gotta come in, that means there was a really uh, there was a problem. And here's the interesting wow. thing. Now here's the interesting thing. Here's actually yeah. here's here's what I learned. It was really interesting. First of all, the safest space uh, uh, for 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 me, I don't, I, I can't speak for the women, is is the modeling stand. I mean, you're you're, you're totally naked, but in, in, yeah. but but, but you're, you're safe, okay? You know, so yeah. I guess I guess in an art school, unless you're some weird art school. But the other thing I realized now, remember, I'm a talker. You know, I'm just loquacious. I be yapping all the time. But I realized I had more power as a model. Than I've ever had in my entire life. Oh, I thought so. Let me explain. Like, I mean, I always thought if the model took their power, they could control the class. I did. I control every class. Here's what would <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, after a while, it would get to be like, uh, I wasn't even thinking about it. But I'd say I would come to a class, right? Uh, yeah. You know, you know, you have your you have your one minute pose or your ten second pose. You know, usually like one minute. You know, you first warm up with like you know ten second, one minute pose, whatever have you. Yeah, the, the gesture drawings. Yeah. yeah. So nobody knew who I was. I walk in unassuming, yep. you know, young young black guy, whatever, and I get up and I start posing, and you could feel it. And then the teacher would in every teacher would never really say, "Look, we have a really good model today." Blah blah blah. He would, the teacher would like give instructions, like, "You are not going to mess this up." Blah 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 blah. And it was really amazing. And I didn't realize anything. I mean, I, I sort of knew it, but I didn't. But then when I started traveling, I went to Mexico one time, and this as a favor, I was doing. They used to there was this guy that had this modeling thing, where he would. Like he would model for the school, this art school. But then, like once a week, I think it was on a Friday, the models would be in charge. You know? Right. Okay, so I was like a guest, I would say guest model, but I was in the area, whatever. I, I, Josefina, Josefina Tirados was, you know, and she she it's to this guy. And so so I model with, with this group of people, right? And it's yeah. the interesting thing, because you know my body type, I'm not no muscular, you know, go to the gym guy, you know. But right. you were lean. Yeah, I was lean, and but but you know, it was like you know, you, you could see muscle definition if I wanted to, I can show muscle, whatever have you. But we yeah. did, we me and this other guy who was like sort of buffed. He was the guy in charge. He did this pose. He did this pose where we we were locked like like two guys in battle. You know, we we, we had locked yeah. our, our arms right, and he was facing one yeah. way, I was facing the other way because you know, it's a classic kind of model pose, so everybody could see both of us. You know, different. You know, whatever. At the end of class, Josefina, you know, when we went, when, when Josefina says. You know, we, you you too was there, and you was just you were just so powerful. 
She said, you was just so powerful. You like dominated the entire thing. And I hadn't realized that, you know, anyway, the other, other modeling things I had, I realized, you know, I mean, I changed this, I changed this one woman, also in Mexico, I changed this woman's style, woman's style completely. She, I changed her style so much. She was like, she was like, she, she, I, mean, I blew her away. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's not why, I guess it's, it's about performance. That's not why I'm mad. Well, no, no, not mad, man. But before we get to that, can I just tell one story, a model story also? Oh, sure. Okay, we had this one model, right? Mm hmm and um, I was in the drawing class. It was like the second year drawing class. So this was like not foundational, not, you know, it was like supposed to be serious illustration drawing, right? Mm. And I had this instructor, right, who didn't like the fact that I came from like a cartooning background. Oh, so like okay. so. When you come from a cartooning background, you know you draw your your figures, you know, in shapes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He's mm. like, no, no, this is drawing. <laughs> you just put the pencil on the page and you draw what you see. So I'm like, all right. I'm <laughs> like, oh, you think I can't do that? Because you know, back in the early '80s and stuff, you're thinking like, okay, first of all, they think we're here because of affirmative action. Mm. We really don't have the skills, you know, meaning us people, right? Mm. And I was like, okay, I, I'll show you. So that I started, you know, drawing. Mm -hmm. So then, after a while, he started to see, like, okay, this guy, you know, he doesn't have to do the comic book thing. He can actually draw, mm -hmm. right? So then, he, like, upped the ante. He said, okay, now everybody's going to get, like, a four-by-eight piece of plywood from a hardware store or lumber yard or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think back in the day, it was, like, lumber yards, right? Yep, yep. So I had to go to the local lumber yard, get four by eight. Me and Yusuf actually went and got ours, right? Mm. And then um, we had to come there with like um, like a roll of craft paper. I don't mm. know if you remember when um, the, art, the artists were doing that. Yep, yep. I know craft paper very yeah. well. And then, you know, we had the big easels. So then you put the four by eight, lean it up against the easel, and then you have the craft paper like on the floor, and you just roll the sheet over. Yep. Right? And then just like... Pull it all the way down, mm -hmm. and now you're going to draw, like, pretty much a life-size figure. Yep. So I guess you feel like, oh, well, let's see if this guy can do life-size, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how I personally took it, like, oh, you're challenging me on life-size now. Okay. Can, 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 anyway, can, so can, we, can I we can, can I Can I just insert something here? You, you, yeah. They were trying to make you a victim, a, a victim of what we call the caste system, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but go ahead. Go on. We're just... <laughs> yeah, so, so he brought in this model, right? And I mean, he had, uh, I have actually two model stories, but I'm only going to tell one of them. One of them, it was like so blue, it was ridiculous. Because uh, I knew he was dating that model. Yeah, but you, you can tell was, me that another time. Tell me that another time. We'll, we'll yeah, I'll, that tell, you that, you I'll tell you that off air. <laughs> no, I want to hear it on air, but another time. Just, just tell me. Tell oh, okay, me okay. All right, all right. So this one, I think she was from Spain, right? Mm -hmm. or, or Italy. No, she was Italian, right? Mm -hmm. But when you looked at her, right? She looked like us, but she was Italian, mm -hmm. right? Like the complexion of her skin was like perfect, like mm -hmm. just as caramel colored as the craft paper and stuff. Yeah, I mean she was beautiful. Yeah, well, right? she's Mediterranean. She's Mediterranean. That's yeah, it. oh, straight up. Mm -hmm. But she did not like. At least I felt she did not like me drawing her. <laughs> She caused such an attitude, but I was like, I'm gonna draw every nook and cranny now. Oh, stop <laughs> this for that. <laughs> oh god. Oh no. Best drawing I did the whole semester. <laughs> oh man. And everybody had to see it too. The teacher was like, oh everybody come look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was so, like, model, you come look at this too. <laughs> hey man, don't you love racism? I tell you. I mean, I, I went to the dentist, man, had my tooth extracted, you know, so I got my little jaw looking like, you know, looking like Kanye West and whatever have you, you know, on one side. Yeah. Uh, but what the hell? I guess it'll go down sooner or later. My oh, I saw that video. Nah, man. Now, you know what was interesting, though? What? You know, like, I find a lot of things in your videos insightful. You don't even, I don't even think you know how, like, I take information from them and extract and go into a whole different direction and stop watching for a while. Mm -hmm. Because I heard you say something or something you did, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, you went to the dentist. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, well, I was supposed to have a dental appointment on the 14th, <laughs> and I actually postponed it, mm-hmm. you know, until October after my birthday. Okay, good right? idea. So, good idea. Yeah. So, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was even talking with the missus about it. She's like, okay, if you really want to go, I said, no, 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 they're really clean there, and they've always clean. Like, my dentist, they always wore masks, and they always were clean, even pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. And she's so good. She'll have one like show tune songs mm. and she'll be singing while she's working on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how confident she is with her skills. Mm. Okay. And she does what she has to do. OK, so you so you got that, that, that I, I stopped them and I put some music on. First was I said, hey, do your thing. That's what it yep. was doing, the heavy work. And then when it sort of calmed down, it went into the new tenant, uh, um, a soundtrack. And they were yep. very, they were very impressed. And I was going yeah. to uh, here's the thing, everything happens for me. It did I didn't plan that at all. That's just the way it is. That's the way I've been rolling these days. You know, it was very interesting. Yeah. But um but what I want to say about that whole uh, um uh, I, I got a good video out of it because the guy was explaining like black man's jaws. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did you see my comment? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it yet. No, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Oh, you should look at my comment. <laughs> I was like, go ahead, doctor, just say it. Say it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did, I did see that. I did see that. I did see that. You did see it, see? <laughs> Man, it was, I, I, I've been having some wild time. That's such a short video. Yeah. You can play that over and over again. It's <laughs> like, wow. Like, well, I don't, I don't really know about that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. But he said, I don't know about that. But but actually, he said, you know, but y'all got something. You know, y'all, y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> he had to admit it. He had to. And what was that, like a minute, three seconds? So, it was very <laughs> short. It was very short. It was very short, but it was like, you know, in the end, he had to like, yeah, well, you know. Yeah, you know, it was like, I don't, have to, I, don't, I don't really want to say it here, you know. <laughs> poignant, man, poignant. But let me tell you why I'm, I'm what a myth, man. So, yeah, was, that? so that was Wednesday, right? That's Wednesday, you know, that's Wednesday morning, you know? Yeah. So Wednesday night as usual, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little some way because, you know, my jaw is swollen up, whatever. And so, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Yvette. Okay, no worries, you know, break it brown, you know, re- regular Wednesday, right? And so she right. brings she brings up this thing about some, some dude uh, from England is playing Malcolm X. I'm going like, oh, okay, what? Mm-hmm. All right. I, I didn't say, all right. I'm going like, what? <laughs> so, Are you talking about the Regina King thing? Yes. This, uh, this, he's from England? The guy that's playing Malcolm X from England. Yeah, yeah, he's from England. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. First of all, I didn't know about the movie. I'm, I'm drinking some Good Belly probiotics. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, drink- I know about Good Belly. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they are okay. Well, this one says ma- mango flavored, but they get it's really pear juice with a whatever. Hey, yeah. but but it's good. It's like a puree, right? Kind yeah. of a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but this is yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's, it's the, the 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 um the pear is from uh, a concentrate, but the other, other stuff, you know, the, the mango and the uh, and banana is all pureed. Mm-hmm. There's there's also evaporated cane sugar. Interesting, you know. Yeah. So I got that because of probiotics, you know, because of this whole this whole dental thing, you know. I said, oh, okay, let me get more healthy, you know. Even yeah. though I, I put I put I put did another video, did I put it up yet? I'm not sure if I put it up yet. Anyway, so so I'm going like okay, so so I went into bit back in my mind. So you know, Yvette goes off about these, you know, the British people coming playing our icons, you know, because you know we got the problem, we had the problem with Harriet, and you know we got the problem with. Uh, with uh, Fred Hampton, you know, with the Get Out boy playing Fred Hampton, you know, yeah, and they keep on saying, "Oh, well, we black, we'll be black," and and now, now you know me, I'm I've been in the theater since nineteen, come on, nineteen sixty seven. I know acting. I mean, went to school. I mean, you know, I went to school for black. I know theater. I'm, I'm a theater director. You know, <laughs> I'm an audio yeah. drama director. Do you? Oh, did you? Was you there that time? I don't think he was. Was you there that time when we did something at the public theater with, with playwriting in the schools? And we had the thing with, with Moses Gunn was there, and all them people there, and I had Creative Unity. We did something together. Was you were you there then? Yeah, I think I was there for that. Okay, do you remember what happened with that? Because when we, because you know how I roll, you know, we just we go through a thing, you know. And so all yeah. the act, all the professional actors, you know, Moses Gunn and them, 
you know, they're getting all like, oh, yeah, we're going to get this, whatever have you. And, of course, you guys are laid back, you know, blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, blah. So you can yeah. feel the professional actors doing something like, oh, we're going to smoke these people, blah, 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 blah. Then when we got to performance, you all killed it. And they didn't know what was going on. It was so, to me, I mean, that's what I felt. It was so funny to me. I'm sorry. You know, do you remember that at all? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Because my thing is like always with the pros. It's like, oh, I'm a pro. You know, I got a name. It's like, yeah, okay, well, you know. <laughs> See, the thing is that I always felt like because we did radio, mm -hmm. it freed us. That's right. And then because we had to do so many characters, and and remember, we would do like, hey, we do a black guy, we do a white guy, we do anybody. <laughs> it's like, you know. Well, that's how we had to play women, you know, but we didn't, you know, we didn't have no women. Well, right? that's that's why I remember what the first thing I said to you, I said, man, y'all, y'all are good. You'll do what you do. But, you know, you know, they're not going to the regular theater is not going to accept you, you know, playing these white people. Yeah. But if you're on radio, blah, blah, blah. And that's how we started, really. And I said, yeah, come on, exactly. come on, I'll train you exactly. some radio. You can do some radio. You're like magnificent. Everybody thinks of in living color, whatever have you. They ain't got nothing on nobody. No, nobody. There's nobody I've run into that can beat Creative Unity. Nobody. You know, Thank you. ever. I'm saying this is historic. You know, if, if yeah. Michael got them tapes, he really need to put them online. Somehow we need to get them up there. Especially, you know, what I'm talking about the the whole Jackie Robinson thing. I mean, the Pitbull oh, yeah, thing. Some of the Louisville Sluggers. We're still looking for that one. Man, Michael's got some. And you know, I still I still don't have a, a day of absence. You know, I don't know. There's some. It's some. What the heck? You know. And that, yeah, that's, we got to find some of those things. The case, case of the I ornate. Really, I, I archived some stuff, meaning like I took some of the stuff and I had it in the trunk. But a lot of the stuff is like paperwork, though. There's really not. I don't know where a lot of the tapes are. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know, man, because the case of the ornate vial, classic, you know. Yeah, and yeah. then then the other thing, just just uh, uh, remember the case of the ordinary bra. That's when we use Fred, the binaural microphone, that, for the that, first time, right? That's exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, so I mean, it, that really like the audio for that was ridiculous, man. Unbelievable. But let me get back to uh, to Miss Regina King. Yeah. So so I wake up this morning, and so I you know let me check this note. Uh, somehow it comes to my feed. They have a they have a, a clip from this movie, right? Yeah, I saw that. And I'm looking, and the first thing I get to say, I say, well, you know, the guy playing Muhammad Ali, he's going to be good. No nope, no worries. The guy is uh the you know uh, uh the guy is. Uh, playing uh, Jim Brown, he's going to be excellent, you know. Yeah, then, yeah. then I say, what, what's what's this guy playing Sam Cooke? Why does he have a guitar in his hand? What what's that all about? That's kind of cheesy. Okay. <laughs> you know? He said, you know, it's Sam Cooke. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't know if Sam Cooke. I don't know if Sam Cooke carry around a guitar. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't exactly. in the room. You know. But you know, it comes from a play. So you know, plays do whatever they do. I don't know what. I don't know what. I don't know anything about the play. Anything like that. You can tell it's, it's a low budget. When I say low budget, you know, something that they thought she could handle, right? But right. then when the guy playing Malcolm X talk, I was like livid. I said, what? <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. I I said, <laughs> Cause the boy is sounding like Barack Obama. You know. No, I'm serious, yeah. man. Now, maybe it's just me, but the boy is sounding like Barack Obama. You I playing Malcolm X through thing. channeling Barack Obama through my, I, don't, I don't know what you're doing, right? Then I really started to get mad, right? Because then I started to think, because you know what Hollywood, it's about relationships, you know? It's all yeah. about relationships. So yeah. I, I think Yvette had said this too. This guy talked to Regina King and he put that holy, well, we all black. And Regina, of course, went for it like an idiot. Just like six, Chrissy Lemons went for the thing. Just like Jordan Peele went for this thing. Oh, we black, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They've been in Hollywood too long. They need to stay. I don't know where, what, what, I don't know what's going on in their head, right? And, and then to play icons or to play important things, because as soon as you do like that, then you get on board. As soon as, so, so, so as soon as get out here, that made this boy you know, uh, famous, whatever have you. But if you look at his other other films, you know, he's terrible because he's not, look, acting is like this. Here's the way I'll explain it. Okay. First, the first thing you learn acting is as as art of reacting, meaning that you listen to the other person and you react on the other person. Okay. And then it's yeah. also a thing of getting it to, getting to your essence and getting rid of your essence and then taking on the es the essence, or I'm going to say essence, I'll keep on saying that, the, the, the role that you're taking on. So basically, right. you can still see yourself through it. 
But yeah, I'll give you a, a really good example. Denzel Washington did a movie called Unstoppable, right? Regular, right. regular Denzel. Peter. But you believe he was a he. You believe he worked the railroad. You believe he was a union man. You believe everything, even though it's Denzel, yeah. because there's something about that. So that's yeah. act, that's that's the essence of acting, right? These boys that come over here from 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 whatever. Uh, let me let me let me give some uh, props to one person. It was Alba, and uh, you know he came over and he 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 good. He did good. He did really good yeah. for, for Stringer Bell, right? But remember yeah. how he, he lied. Now he lied, but his agent or whoever, and they said, look, you can't use that British accent because they don't want that. Uh, so he basically lied to get this thing. All these people getting these jobs, they lying, all right? Or they, 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 yeah. they, they, so it's, I blame it on casting directors, you know, and people like that. But here's the thing. There's a thing we call, I would call indicating, where you, you get, you get it's not even imitating, it's indicating. So say the, um, let's stay with the Get Out Boy. He did this thing called uh, Widows or something like that, and you can yeah, I see Widows. he was doing he was doing t uh, Tim Roth and lie and lied to me. Yeah, you look at that. He was doing Tim Roth and lied to me. That boy can't act. Okay, Black Panther. He wasn't good. I'm sorry. You just because they, they may be even trained. in his famous deleted scene. Did you see the deleted scene? No, which was with uh, him and the Koye? You oh, see that? Oh yeah, I think I did see it. Terrible. I yeah, because that was his moment. That was his moment right there. And yeah, well, there's a reason why he deleted it. Anyway, so <laughs> so you get these people coming, and then I saw a trailer for Fred Hampton thing, and again, it's the, yeah. the Kluya boy. You know what I mean? And he's yeah. he's playing a caricature. I'm they're gonna focus on um the other brother. Yeah, they the did. That was in sorry um. Yes, so, uh, so sorry, sorry to bother you. Whatever it is, yeah. No, he's yeah, good. Yeah. Keep saying he's, he's good. Yeah, he he's wacky, but he's good. He's a, he's a classical, a classical, you know, uh, dysfunctional actor. Let's put it that way. You know, whatever yeah, you want to say. Yeah. Let me fix this camera. He, again. he can play that role easily. Oh yeah, well, well, you know. But the point is, the point is, but you can't look. Here's my big problem. So 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 when 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 when, Clue, when he gets on a circuit and they start asking him about you know Fred Hampton. What's he going to say? He don't know nothing about no Fred Hampton. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He becomes a spokesman for Fred Hampton. You understand what I'm saying? I was going to say, if, he, if he's listening to this now, he's got to do his homework. It's too late. He but said it's too late. The boy, he's on the circuit already. Is that what you're saying? It, it look, it's just too late, okay? Just like the woman who did who did Harriet. What did she know? Let, let me get let me, let me me get to this thing about... Oh, this, 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 Because, <laughs> you know, they... This this thing that Regina King did one night in one night in Overtown or whatever the movie is called. Yeah, you never watched it, huh? Did you watch it or you did? I saw the clip. The movie the movie's not out yet. I think it's premiered. I'm talking about Harriet though. No, I never saw Harriet. Man, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna. No, I'm sorry. No. Actually, I actually am gonna watch it. Like I, I definitely didn't promote it or anything like that, and I definitely was not happy with it. And you know, and told people about you know how she did what she did. You know. But no. uh, I'm gonna check it out on this on Netflix. I'm gonna check it out. Uh, you, you, yes. you. If you, <laughs> if, if you see Cicely Tyson or or whatever, you know, or even um, yeah. or what's the name? Then I'm sorry, that's it. It's, it's like how are you gonna play Malcolm X after, after, after Denzel Washington played Malcolm X? Please. Yeah. Anyway, but the point is, the part of that thing. If you understand what happened that night when they, you know, when when they came back from the from the thing, and they was in this hotel room and they couldn't go out, they didn't go out party, whatever have you, and they talk race or whatever, they they talk what they talk. Yeah. That's the era. That's the era I grew up in. When I say the era I grew yeah. up in, I know that's sixty two or sixty three, whenever it was. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm telling you, 67, 60, 66, 67, 68, 69, What we would do basically, I'm talking about the real us revolutionaries, if you want to call us that, you know. We would yeah. might we, maybe we might start talking at like six o'clock at night, smoking cigarettes, so cool room, and we would debate all night long. All night long. It'd be the sun coming up, be seven o'clock, and we still ain't resolve nothing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Now, unless you went yeah. through that, you don't know what that is. Let me explain. Let me explain. Exactly. Let me let me give you a better example. I love yeah. the film. I love the film Platoon. I just love that film. I think it's oh, a, it's this incredible film. But you know what uh, Oliver Stone did? He basically had them boys go through like they were in the platoon. Yeah. The whole rehearsal. 
Regina King, some woman like that, do you think she had those boys go through an all night, you know, a, for 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 four nights in a row? I don't know what I don't know what her technique was. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. all, up all night and she'd be there all night, you know, in smoke filled room and da 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 and then you know, just drinking whatever, whatever for for four you know what I'm saying? That couldn't yeah. happen. Plus what really offends me is these are four powerful men and you're gonna give this project to a woman. I don't care. I'm going to tell you to a, a black woman. I don't care what kind of woman, right? Who had, who yeah. only did television directing. Television directing. She didn't grow up in that era, either. So who yeah. in who in that era? Who in that on that production grew up in that era? What did they know? You yeah. you, you you you. I'm sure they probably talked to Jim Brown. You talk to Jim Brown all you want. I'm I'm telling you, it ain't no. No. So what offends me is that, like I said, it's a relationship. So so these people keep on coming. I'm saying these people on purpose. No air, no air quotes. These people, straight up. They keep on coming and pimping our stuff and, and forging relationships with people, having meetings. That's how we're going to have a meeting. Come on. The reason why, we, look, you can say what you want about Spike, but what Spike does he, at least when I was in the heyday, what he would do, he would go to every play, every off-Broadway play. He would see talent as they're working. Yeah. That's why all those people got discovered. Yeah, and let, 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 let's look look let's look at the perp who, person who did perpetrate the fraud. You know who I'm talking about? Miss Holly Barry. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. she put all her stuff in there to be that junkie, you know, with, with Samuel L. Jackson. But remember, she still yeah. was not a theater-trained person. Yeah. And then she ascends to the movies and she's a terrible actress. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, they gave her an award for being raped on screen. That's why they gave her that Academy Award. Sorry. Yeah. That's my that's my that's my assessment, you know? <laughs> and now I stand I, by it. Okay, you're not the only one that said that years ago, man. It was like, yo, come on. You know, so anyway, so I'm really highly upset. I'm highly upset because of the. I'm highly upset because we have these people going for this identity pop. Oh, this is a good time to get it out because you know we have these racial strife, whatever have you. I am upset, and there's nothing I'm going to do about it. You know, other than it's okay, you all did what you did. I don't have to support it, so I ain't. You know, and there's more authentic stuff out there, man. I was just checking out. There's this thing called uh, the Who We Are Project or the Who We Are, a chronicle of racism in America by the, this guy, Jeffrey Robinson. He's been doing these talks. It's a forthcoming documentary. And I'm more interested in something like that than be looking at this fictionalized thing with this bad acting, you know? And Regina <laughs> King, who ain't got no, Regina King, who ain't got no, no, no bona fides as a director. Not a, not yeah. a, a motion picture director. What's she direct? Some, some, some TV stuff? Come on. And then they, everybody, hey, um Oh, I think I yeah. think what happens, you know what happens in black American acting? I think what no, happened she, now. She directed, what's the name? Um, Bill Street. She directed Bill Street? Yeah. She was in Bill Street. I thought she directed it, no? I don't know. Let me look. Hey, maybe I should look, look on you. Don't you got your phone? Don't you got some computer there? Yeah, yeah. I'm on the computer right now. Let me see you better now. check. I don't think she directed Bill Street. I would have known that. No, she didn't. No, 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 no. <laughs> She she won she won the Academy Award for acting in Beale Street. Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, and I'm I'm, okay, I'm on IMDb. I'm gonna go Virginia. Do whatever you want. I'm, if she directed it, I'm wrong, but I ain't wrong. There's no way I would have known she directed Beale Street. I didn't see Beale Street. I should see that. See. You know what I mean? I read the book, of course, a long time ago, but I never, yeah, I never seen the movie. But here's the thing. These, I think what happens is a lot of these actors, they realize they can't act but for so long that they immediately start producing and immediately start trying to direct projects, you know? So, yeah. so, and so they, because they have contacts, you know, it's not like back in the day when you have like, they say when Luther Vandross first came with, 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 with his, his album, you know, because he was a background singer for so long, if you look at his first album, the, the, the personnel of the album is amazing, you know what I mean? Somebody like Betty Davis, you know what I mean? The, the singer, when she look at the personnel on her album, it's amazing, the personnel, because you, you, you build up, you know, cachet. Yeah, from, you're from, right, you're right. Everything's TV. <laughs> this I is know her she, first, um, she did a documentary, Story of a Village, in 2014, though. Oh, really? Well, I can do a documentary, too. So what? Would you want me to do? Yeah? <laughs> so what? <laughs> I can't 
can't does, calm you down. Does, does, does she? Mad. Does she know? Does she know about lenses? <laughs> Does she know about lenses? Does she know that how long did she spend on post production? How long did she spend on pre production? That woman yeah. busy. How long did she spend on pre? You, you know me. You know me. Everything is preparation is everything. Yeah. If anything I did with you guys, I always was. I always made sure that this. this that that's what. That's what set me on a vibe because the script wasn't finished. You know what I mean. I was going yeah. like these boys, man. They gonna get you my last. That, that's what. That's that. We don't. I won't go. We won't go into what happened after that one, you know, because I didn't curse everybody out and all the rest of that stuff. Okay, yeah. I, I shouldn't have did that, but now things haven't worked out the way it's supposed to work out. But my point is, preparation is everything. As you, you it made us better. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you enter it, as it's going to be. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I, I guess because I'm trained as a stage manager, and let me tell you, what stage manager. You 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 you're with the director, with the producer, and the, with, with the writer. I'm talking about talking about theater now. And you working your took us off, man. When I was in when I was in graduate school with Mahmoud Kareem Hakkar, we, we we he direct we did this we did an adaptation of Caligula, right? The original, not not you know not the, the Caligula, the, the the philosophical play, right? We right. worked on that thing so intensely. It was just me and him so intensely. People actually thought we were lovers. <laughs> wow. Iranian dude. and we worked this thing on so intensely then when we to put this production up right we do all kinds of first we roughed off the theater because they wouldn't let us have this it was at, it was at, 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 at it's called a school of visual arts whatever whatever it's called uh, whatever over there at Douglas campus you know in Rutgers right and they and they, right. you know, there was the black box there was a new premier theater and we just you know as graduates so we just roughed us up they said well it's all books he said no we'll take we'll, we'll, we'll take the days before before the semester started and we put this thing on it was unbelievable. Nobody could. The thing was packed. They had to poke all kinds of chairs. The thing was packed every night. It was like because as you are, as as it's going to be. That's the thing. And my thing is my joy as a, as a stage man, or even as, I guess every every audio drama I've done, a producer, right? But the thing is, is that working. You know, when I did the seminal thing, when I did The Outsider, there's a picture of me. Man, the Outsider, I did everything for it. I wouldn't allow anybody to do anything. I adapted it. I did the script. I even ran the scripts off. There's a picture of me someplace with me, all the scripts. And those scripts were thick. <laughs> yeah. yeah I directed it. I engineered the whole, everything I did because it was it was, a, it was it was like a it was like a graduation part um, uh, thing for myself. When when we did when we did uh, the the long dream. I did that for you guys because that was a graduation a project for you guys. Yeah, it was. You know? So and it was like that. Then I did a whole... My point really is that then the, so there's there's the preparation, then there's rehearsal. Rehearsal to me is fun and games. That's what I I, I have like yeah. like you can't see it in when I, when we do audio dramas because I have very few. Well, I have one rehearsal, one run through, whatever have you, you know. And then it's like yeah, let's let's go because I know I let the adrenaline go. You know, if you don't, if you can't do it, it's too bad. That's what happened with the professional actors. They they were so used to having these long rehearsals and we wasn't having that, you know. So in fact, oh, we talk about rehearsals, man. Do you, yes, you must have been. Okay, remember when we did? Yeah, it was it was a uh, was it, yeah it was a long dream. We did the long dream yeah because we had the binaural microphone, and it was that thing. I remember I I had I had just finished the script. I came, I, it was this is eighty eight. That's right because I came up from the Democratic National Convention, took the car up, and I spent the weekend with Bernard right. And I just finished the script. Yeah. I said I said Bernard, I think I got a role for you, this preacher right, and so. So, okay, yeah, so he's going to run through it one night. So the night, the, the day before the performance, you know, we run through it. And I can see, like, Bernard was just doing his thing. And I can, I think as Yusuf said, this is not going to work, man. Because, you know, Bernard was, like, flat, you know? Yeah. You know, whatever it is. And then I get, so Bernard calls me in the middle of the night. He says, Anthony, I got it. I said, okay. I didn't say anything else like that. Man, when he did that singing preacher Everybody yeah. was like, whoa, it was so yeah. different. In fact, it was, the thing was so, it was so, we were so overwhelmed that I couldn't stop the scene. I had to run. I remember I was engineering. I had to run around. I left the, I left the board with, 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 with Smooth and, and, and Daryl, and I ran around to the studio, A, whatever it was, and I had to hum you all down hum, hum, to get yeah. the energy, to dissipate the energy. And then we swung it over to, to Michael, who was, who, Michael Mary, who was, who was in, uh, was in uh, Edit B, engineering from there for the next scene. But I'm telling you, man, it was a, a, he, he, 
he took that preacher and people were possessed. In fact, the funny thing, if you really listen to the tape, I see heard the tape. Joe Masseri at the end, he goes, Amen. But it's such a white amen. It's just so funny. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> that was crazy. But it was perfect, though. It was. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, God. <laughs> so that's it, man. I'm, I'm through with being, being peeved. I'm going to say peeved rather than whatever. Through and be peeved. But I'm just trying to say these people have got to stop running for this money and trying to run for some accolades or some identity politics, man. You're messing up the art. You know, yeah. Regina, if I ever see Regina, I say, I would say, woman, I'm going to say it that way. I said, woman, what do you think he was doing? How can you, how in the world do you think you can take four, pow- four of the most powerful black men in the world? You don't know nothing about them. Are you, are, do, wh- wh- who's your man? Is your man powerful? <laughs> you know, obviously not. <laughs> oh, man, I curse. I wouldn't curse it out. I would just say. Baby, I think, you know, I would say baby because then it'll be, you know, I get, it comes some, some me too thing against me, you know. But I say, yeah. look, no, y'all messed up. And y'all got to stop messing up because y'all just don't know, you know. <sighs> anyway, I'm through ranting, man. I better stop. I think we talked a little bit too long. Anyway, so what, so what else is happening, man? Tell, tell me, calm me down, you know. Bernard me down, you know, because I'm <laughs> just too, <laughs> man. You have no idea. I mean, I when I saw that clip, I just and you know the Montreal Film Festival is tonight, so that's premiering tonight to, 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 in, in Montreal. So I, I'll, I'll see what people say tomorrow, or the next day, what they're gonna say about this little project, you know. But I'm tired of them, and you know they, you know what they do it for? They do it for because because of the name recognitions of of the people, the I, our icons. Leave our icons alone. That's what I would say. There's so much other stuff to do, man. It's funny because, like, and the reason why I say it's funny because I saw a video, like, about three weeks ago, right, on uh, Kwame Torre, right? Mm. So now, first I watched one, and then I saw, you know, in the feed, there were more. Mm. But the the one that I I clicked on second, the first one was him talking Mm. when he was stoking, right? Yep. So it's black and white, Stokely, definitely Snick, definitely him, you know, doing his thing, mm-hmm. definitely saying black power, right? Mm-hmm. So the next one I clicked on, I thought it was going to be um, like a little mini doc about him. Mm-hmm. But it was really a conversation between two brothers from the Caribbean. And then I looked at the the um, the channel, the name on the channel, and it's like um, Caribbean TV, mm-hmm. right? So I listened to like about maybe it was like maybe a 50 minute um, interview, mm-hmm. you know, discussion between. Two well, hold, hold, hold on a second. Was the interview was was he being interviewed or was it is a, a, um, a, 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 an actuality? What, what, what was it? No, it was a discussion about him and his oh. impact. OK, OK. Right. You know, but I was like, wait a minute. This Caribbean TV, which is cool. And these brothers are talking about him, which is cool, because he's from the Caribbean. So, like, at least at that time, it was clear that it was like, look, we're talking about a Caribbean man who had impact in America doing stuff because he's one of our icons. And we're talking about him. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I here's the thing. Like man. it wasn't like, oh, we're gonna talk about Frederick Douglass. Nope. <laughs> like, but yeah, we're talking about him because he's from Trinity, and we from Trinity, and this is Caribbean. I think it was Caribbean Nation TV or something. So we need to talk about Caribbeans. Well, I, tra- I, 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 I'm sorry to say, I have to challenge that too, on a number of levels. First of all, yes, Stokely always kept his Caribbean lilt in his voice. You could hear it. You know what I mean? Like that. Mainly because, remember, he's very close to his mother. In fact, one of the reasons why he went to Africa, whatever, ran over to Africa, is because they threatened to kill his mama. And you got that from, there's a thing called Black Power Mixtapes, where he, you know, he's, he even takes and interviews his mother. Okay. But he has to, there's this thing, you know about this. There's a question, it's like, the question is, where did you have your first fight? So I ask you, because where did you have your first fight as a child? Where did you have your first fight? The Bronx. Thank you. Okay. I had my first fight in the Bronx also. That's where you were made. You were made in the Bronx. 
Okay. Yeah. Now you can people can say you're from Queens or you're from that, 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 but you were made in the Bronx. Okay. Right. Now yeah. let's go to Stoke. Now you have to remember the times. This is when people were hiding their Caribbean roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you people. I mean, I was at a school with this this girl at uh, Livingston College. This was this was like so. I was there like seventy three. Se I'm sorry, seven seventy four, seventy five. Somewhere say about seventy five. Uh, there was this girl that was on campus. You know, she's talking regular black. Then all of a sudden, she we came back from break, and all of a sudden, she had this she had this you know Jamaican patois down or whatever. Have you said what the, what happened? What, what's, what's going on? Well, Bob Marley had hit. And so now they were proud to be Jamaican now. Now she could be yeah. let loose to be Jamaican. All the time, she's, you know, she's hiding under, not hiding under, but, you know, being the black experience. Stokely, yeah. you remember, remember, we, we, he is marching with civil rights. Right. He goes, up, he's at the Bronx High School of Science. Yeah. In other words, he's made in the Bronx. Yeah, he's got Caribbean roots. And you can say like that, but you can't, but his act, he's, he's going to jail, with, you know, with people in the South. Yeah, but my whole point was, this was like the 80s program that was just highlighting the Caribbean-ness of him. Uh-huh, this is good. Yeah, which I'm saying, you know, like, it's just like, um, you know, because I'm about like a decade behind you at least, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So growing up and and a decade behind you, when I moved to Queens, right? When I was mm. in the Bronx, mm. it was mostly like ADOS over there. Yeah. Where I was at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Morris, Jerome, Anderson, all of that, you know, all of that, you know, that part of the Bronx over there near Yankee Stadium and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You're right? saying, so now I moved to Queens, mm. right? So there's more people from the Caribbean in Queens at that point. That's right. The decade so after. All of a sudden, that's what I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off, but that's what you're saying. This didn't change until like night by 1965. So you're you're talking about the 1970s. That's when the yeah, that, yeah. that's when like stuff flipping. 75, 76, 77, 78. That's right. That's right. So now you know that's the first time I ran into you know a brother that was from you know it was like okay I knew people from um what they used to call it um. British Honduras when oh. I was in the Bronx there was one family from. British Honduras. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's Belize. Yeah, that's Belize now, but yeah. it was British Honduras. Big, that's right? right. That's right. They took over. They took over the. They took over the South Bronx actually. But go ahead. Right. So now I'm in yeah. Queens, and it's like the first time I ran into a Jamaican, and the first time I ran into a Haitian, and you know Trini and other places. And I'm like, oh, huh? like, yeah, like they start like in my mind, you know, yeah. my young mind, you know. You know, young forming mind, like trying to develop just who I am as a person, who I am in my own family, who we are now. This family uprooted from the Bronx and Queens, adjusting to, you know, new schools, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, new ways of thinking, how other people react to you. Because like even the ADOS people that reacted to, to us moving there, it was like, you know, it was very tribal. It was like, yep. well, you're from the Bronx, we're yes, from sir. Queens, you know, and it was like, well, OK, so it's the Bronx Queens thing. Then it was like, oh, well, you're a Yankee. It's like, what Yankee? Like, what the hell is that? You know, it was like, yeah, I like the Yankees. You know, Yankees in the Bronx. You know, blah blah blah. So it was like Yankee this, and you know, oh, y'all coconuts, this, that, and the other. You know, it's like, yeah, there's like a war going on mm -hmm. on the seventies. That the didn't happen to the seventies. You're right. In fact, when I was growing up, there was this whole thing. Us Bronx, Bronx people weren't supposed to go to Brooklyn. Said Brooklyn, what? No. Yeah, exactly. Of course, That's I, all I, I knew Bronx, Brooklyn. I, I was always an outlier. I traveled all over the place, man. I went to every place. I went to Staten Island. I, 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 nothing could stop me. I went to Jersey. Jersey City. It doesn't matter. Went up and up. But I'm an outlier because most of the time, in fact, there's a movie where the guy says in the beginning of the movie he's, he's, he's got to go, do, do this job. He's, he's unemployed, something like that. And then they say they they're gonna send him. I think he's from the Bronx. They're gonna send him to Brooklyn. He said Brooklyn. I don't know. Blah, blah. He goes, no, it's a funny joke. But let me tell. You, good, finish, and I'm gonna tell you a little joke. Go ahead. Now, I was just going to say that, um, you know, around this this time, too, you know, in the mid 70s and stuff was the first time that I I saw an ad on television like West Side Story. So I'm looking at West Side Story and I'm like, oh, OK, now I'm starting like I'm starting to like connect with what I'm dealing with on a regular basis with what happens in West Side Story, where it's like. There's all these little clicks mm -hmm. of, you know, who you are and stuff like that. And, and um, 
you know, where you come from and, and what these little things that I never really thought like, hey, well, why should you be so like super proud of, of this or that? But it's like, yo, we all here. We all playing football and stuff. It shouldn't be no issue. <laughs> But it was coming up, and I was like, "It's like some Jets and Shark shit," you know. I was like, "Yeah, what's up with this?" Well, we had we, with South Bronx. We, we see. I grew up in, again at a different era, and, and Patterson Project was different, and uh, Melrose same way is different. But when you got yeah. like when you went to Lincoln and see the Lincoln Projects in, in Harlem, right across the, the Madison Avenue Bridge, there they were different yeah. too. But the thing about the Patterson Project, especially, and a little bit about the Melrose, is that we had my next door neighbors are actually white. The yeah. next time we're Puerto Rican. So we were totally mixed. We were just all poor. But here's the trick. Here's the funny thing. Remember, remember this yeah. is the late 50s, early 60s, right? Now, mm-hmm. we had spent literally a huge amount of time trying to teach the Puerto Ricans how to dress. You know what I mean? You, you, you <laughs> color coordination, whatever. I mean, literally, you would, you would finally we got everybody on board. And then, of course, Dominicans sort of snuck in. Nobody knew because we, we, we didn't call them poor. We said everybody was Spanish. You went, went to the Spanish store or whatever. It was Spanish, right? So a Dominican yeah. system is really See, by the time By the time I grew up in the Bronx, we did actually start saying Puerto Rican. But it was like everybody was Puerto Rican. You could have been from Peru. Colombia, are you Puerto Rican? <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Now, I'm like, trying. Puerto Rican have replaced Spanish as the national thing of anybody that's right. that spoke Spanish. Because it's dominant. But here's the trick. You didn't know why? Because the Dominicans did something really slick. Dominicans yeah. slipped in under the Puerto Ricans and wouldn't tell anybody they were Dominican. You know what I mean? Because remember, yeah. remember '65. That's when they, 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 Lyndon Johnson, they, 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 Trujillo got rid of Trujillo. So all those Dominicans then came up to the states, but they, yeah. but they came under Puerto Rican. So nobody knew. Everybody was Spanish with Puerto, oh, Puerto Rican, big deal. Dominicans wasn't saying they were Dominican. Believe me, they weren't. Right? And okay, so, but amongst amongst them and the Puerto Ricans, they admitted it though. The, yes, <laughs> but nobody the way outside didn't know. But here's the trick. Yeah. So we finally got the, the Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, everybody. We got them dressed right, dress code. You know, you don't be wearing no plaids with no stripes, with no loud colors. You know, you, you know, like that. Then in the early 70s, that's when you started getting those those colors, right? But what was happening in the early yeah. 70s? That's when the Caribbean people were coming. Then we just had to give up because all these people were coming with these colors. You'd be going like, what the hey? Man, we just spent a, a two decades teaching people how to dress, and they're gonna come with these these. Well, that don't make no sense. You know, my grandma would never let you walk out the house like that. Come on, now. So that's my little joke about fashion. That's funny. That's funny because um, I remember like um, first time we went to D Street, right? You know Delancey. Yeah. So you know you go to Delancey to get the you know the wholesale stuff. Yeah, get the leather jacket. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is this is like um. I think it was like 77, 78. So now, you know, bell bottoms have now turned to like pleats, mm. you know, pleated pants and stuff like that. You know, everything had a name back then, you know. Yep. Like um, the leather bombers were now, you know, giving way to like the um, sheepskins and stuff like that. Yep, sheep, yeah. So, you know, this is like early, you know, the early development of rap and stuff like that before they started calling it hip hop and everything like that. Can I hold, hold, so you thought, like, hold your thought, hold your thought for just a second. Just a second. Yeah. Right before that era, late late sixties, and right before what you're talking about, there was a thing we had blind knits. It was a knit, It was called blind knits. We only got it from one shop in Mid Manhattan that you would get a yeah. a, 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 a certain stuff. These, these were colors, you know what I mean? But there was a certain yeah. kind of knit. It was like I guess it was a polyester kind of thing, but they call them blind B L Y a blind knit. Yeah. So that's like a precursor to that color thing. That's when that color thing started to shift a little bit. But go ahead. Yeah, and also during that time, Playboy shoes started coming in colors. Yep. 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 The Playboys. I remember my older brothers had that. Then you, had, then you had the marshmallow shoes. Oh, all kinds of weird things started to happen. Oh, yeah, there. marshmallows and then the, 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 the females with the espadrilles and stuff like that. You know what it also changed then, too? That's when that's when the women started to do, you know, young, young mothers started to dress their, their young childs up like them. You know, was, so you have the child and the mother dressed in the same outfit. That's when that's what also like the that, that was that was also a breakdown in the family because the girls were no longer girls. The girls were dressing like women, and the women were allowing them to do that. It's bad, bad, yeah. bad business, you know. Well, my, my fashion man. During I'm, that time, being a young boy, it was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> you know, we didn't see it, you know, as like a breakdown. It was like, oh, okay, you know, so so. Yeah. 
like she grown now. <laughs> That's the point. That's the big problem. Yeah, anyway, yeah. so listen, we done droned on, man. It's getting late. I got to put this up <laughs> because I want to... This other thing I did, uh, my Instagram thing I did that uh, I, I didn't send it to a bunch of people. I just put it up. And this sort of goes with that, with the whole Regina King, you know, uh, like... Yeah, let me look at it right now. <laughs> this, this Hollywood thing, man. Do I look upset? Oh, man, I was, I was, I was fuming. <laughs> the, the latest one? The latest one, right? Well, I did one... I did a Joe Biden one. Is that what you wearing the black? No, no, the black, the black is, is yeah, that's that's the one in the park. That's the thing. I did a after that I did a Joe Biden one that went up. But I, I you know, don't go away about that. This is my regular and you know, I got this series with with between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's really it's like yeah. it's, it's, it's people don't understand what I'm doing, but it's like performance art. You know what I mean? Playing the characters like Oh no, I, I kinda see it because the way it looks like it, it's almost like a um like a talk show chair in a way. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a set of like a talk show chair. Yeah. Then, then that bitch just you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. What I'm trying to do is I'm supposed to be the characters trying to curry favors from them, trying to get on their good side because they're gonna be powerful yeah. people, whatever have you. You know, so he's trying to give them advice. You know, so it's just, sometimes he's trying to you know help them to be more black, but it ain't working. You know, that it's just yeah. it's minor, minor, minor little things. You know how it is. So listen, man. You know. You so wait, wait. So. But you see that um, she got the Chuck Taylors now, though. Oh please, that's, that's just so played out, man. So I, I would have, she got U.S. kids. That would have been more, you know. I would, I would have respected her more for that. So even South Africans got Chuck Taylors, man. Come on, that's universal now. Oh, look, look, I ain't got nuts. And you know, there's this whole thing, you know, what she does. Look, here's this whole thing. Have you ever dated an Indian girl? No. No black person is there. No black man has. has de- <laughs> have you ever been to an Indian wedding? Yeah, I've been to India, in India. Me too. Huge. In India. Oh, wow. Okay. That's but, like one up. Oh, man, yeah. you're, I mean, huge. I mean, you talk about elephants and, 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 and procession and whatever have you, because they, wow. they get that money from all over the world. Because I've been in India. I would love to see that. But, but let me tell you something. I have dated an Indian girl. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you sneaky peek you. <laughs> oh, what, what I'm trying to say is I'm one of the few black men who had that, but she was darting too. She had big bazoos. She was darting, she was she was nice. In fact, here's a funny thing, you know, when when, yeah. when, 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 when she she said at the end, she said, You renew, you renewed my faith in men. That's what she told me. I love these compliments. But later on she sent me she was nice enough to send me a card that she had gotten married. She married a white guy, of course. Kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> that's what they do, man. That's and she was dark skin, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. you know. But she, I, I really liked her. I liked her a lot. In fact, let me tell you that now. I'm not going to tell you that story. Yeah, I'm going to tell you that story. Here's what it was, man. That's when I did that famous audio drama in uh, in Mexico City, right? Outside yeah. of Mexico City, it was when it, we was rehearsing all day. Then 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 the it was threatening to rain. We did this audio drama, and though it was raining. It's, we did the audio drama. It stopped. It stopped raining. Sun came out. Uh-huh. And as soon as we finished, literally, it like a torrential downpour, right? Yeah. Well, when this conference, right, it was like a four day conference, five day, whatever it is. I got there and I saw this in this, this Indian girl. I saw, saw her from the beginning. And so I was, I was did rapping to her a little bit. She said, No, I know what this conference is all about. You're going to try to, you know, basically say, You're going to try to get in my pants. You know, so I'm not with that, and blah, 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 blah. I said, No worries, no worries. Just glad you, you know, whatever. So I left her alone, right? So I end up, I end up with this like uh, 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 Mexican slash indigenous sister, right? I like to say on top okay. of this, but this, so we 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 were kicking it right. So so and then plus I did this this famous audio drama. It doesn't matter. So then what happened was the the this, the the Mexican sister right. She left the day early right. That night the Indian sister came back to me and basically offered herself to me. That's wow. how, you know, hey, yo, black man. I'm the essence of yeah, the black, black man. Back 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 <laughs> then. Back then, come on, you know how I look. Come on now, <laughs> with the oh, locks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to be a holy terror, man. It's a terrible thing, man. It's a terrible thing to say, but I could me too myself. No, I never me too. No, no, no. I never, I never really. Uh, you know, I never. 
It was all rap because then you rap. There's no pulling on somebody, raping them, stuff like that. No, no, no. It was all. If well, you, you you came from definitely the generation where you had to know how to rap. I mean, if you didn't have the lines, you know, if you didn't have the, uh, you call a swag to say, but you have the one time coming. This is the last story I'm going to tell, right? It, it, yeah. When I went to Bronx Community College, when I first got out of high school, went to Bronx Community College, you know, we did school that we took out, uh, we took school over, you know, for protests for, you know, for black studies, you know, black professor, whatever have you. So I was one of the revolutionaries. You know, I was in a revolutionary cell. I had the beret, the black boots. I mean, I'm, you know, serious, 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 right? And I walk around, and I just learned this later. Some, some one, of these, one of these girls, I'm going to say girls, because, you know, we were all young. She said, I don't believe he's that serious. And so, you know, so she come, you know, and so I'm with, you know, we, we kick it, boom. You know what I mean? And I still go back to my revolutionary ways. What can I say? You know what I mean? Because yeah. back then, back then, you, as serious as you was for the revolution, we were also the best partiers because you had to, you had to, you had to get that out some way. You know, it was like a balance, you know that what I mean? Energy. Yeah, that energy is like a balance. So you were serious. You no, know, you studying Che and 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 the Krumba and, and 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 Mao and you know maybe you know Fanon. Then when you was heavy into the books, you know what I mean. You you espousing theory. That's when you had again. We had the all night sessions. You know, you got to know what you're talking about, right? Yeah. You know, I don't even know if what the Rodney was out there, and we was reading some stuff. You know what I mean? And so you know, the, the John Hendrick, all that we was reading some stuff, and so people would say these guys are too serious. We don't believe that. So they were like challenging us stuff like that, but. Ah, oh, the, the, the bygone days. But here's here. Let me tell you this thing. As 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 all the stuff I did then, the stuff I'm doing now is just as important, even more important. ADOS, this this movement, ADOS movement, to me is the most important movement I have ever known. Even the stuff that I went through is not being important as what we're doing now because we've accurately named ourselves, and we get so much pushback. These people, they don't understand. There's two separate things happening here. There's the identification of ADOS. Now a lot of people can't they they don't they can't they can't wrap their heads around, but you know, if you're if you have a lineage in in in, in the, from beyond sixty-five, you know, if you have lineage yeah. and struggle, that's that's your identity. It's an identity marker. But then you have what we call the movement. A lot of these people, they're not pissed up, they can't argue with the lineage. They're arguing because they can't, the movement is bulletproof. Yeah. They can't they they, they can't do nothing. You know what I mean? So, no, wait, let me ask you this, though. Because, um, you know, you had the Pan-Africanists, right? And, you know, we all definitely agree with that. You know, but some people are like, nah, man, I'm just straight. I'm not trying to separate nobody, blah, 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 and stuff. And I'm like, it's not about separation. You know, in that respect of, like, we understand that we all have captivity. You know, we all are under this, you know, white supremacy. But my thing is that, but the, the lineage thing is something that everybody claim. Now that we're claiming it, it's a problem. That's right. Because they can't, they can't feed off us anymore. But there's no, people can say they're panic all they want. Guess what? You know the biggest panic you know right now? Yeah, that's right. You're talking to them. I live in Africa. I have an African wife. I'm a pan Africanist, <laughs> but that's what I <laughs> but that's what I choose to be. That's not my idea. You know what it's like. You know, okay, let's let's go to this. Right, you're born yeah. you're born with a, with an X Y chromosome. It's you and me born X Y, which means that we're male, right? That's right. Now, yeah. some particular point in my life, I all of a sudden say, well, no, I want to be. You know, I I I want to identify as a pansexual or as a homosexual. Well. Yeah, you identify, but that's not your essence. That's not your just your. That's not your source. That's what the that's what the difference is. So 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 everything that Pan Africanism, all of such stuff, they're, they're ideologies. You can I can take on any ideology I want. I could be I could be a, no, I can't be a white supremacist. I could be a I can be a, a I can be a, 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 I can be in the system. I can be a black person embracing Anglo racist white supremacy. I can do that. Right. You know, that's an ideology. You know, all these people that run around these these black Republicans, they're they're, they're black Republicans. That's an ideology. That doesn't stop yeah. them from being ADOS. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, that's what I'm saying. So you're like, not you're not embracing the ide ideology of ADOS. You just you, know, you could be like you said, you could be ADOS and be a black Republican at the same time. You know, but it's like yo, it's like you can't deny where you came from. Yeah, you know. 
So you can say, oh, I don't mess with those atheist people. They're just they're whatever. Okay, then don't mess up, but you still, you, you are them. You're just denying yourself. You, you're having a battle with yourself. You know what really pisses them off, though? Because everybody everybody wants this flag. You know, you get the, oh, wait a wait a wait a uh, red, black, and green, the Marcus Garvey flag. You know, the Rasta's got their flag, you know, whatever have you. You know, the, you know you know the flag. I, I like I like the... I, I like the the, the 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 black flag with the red, black, and green flag with the stars, or whatever have you. But ADOS for your claim for reparations, you have to what? You have to wrap yourself in the American flag. Yeah. Because your beef is against the American flag, not against the American flag. It's like it's like if the American flag see the see the red, black, and green flag come and say, "What's that? You ain't got no army." Boom, boom, boom. How is the American flag gonna fight against itself? Yeah. You can't. And then what? But people don't get. Remember the the, the red, black, and green face. So yeah, Marcus Garvey had it in the, in, in the '30s, whatever it is. But that didn't really come to prominence. We didn't pick it up until the '70s. Before then, if you look at all those early civil rights movements, it was like red American flags because we American citizens, and they don't get yeah. that. They want to separate yeah. them because oh, America means this and that. And you know where they? Let me say, you know where they got that from? Really, that hate that so-called gun against Smith man. That's the white boys. That was that was against the the, the whole uh, uh, what's it, the the yuppies and the, and, the, and whatever against the, uh, the the Vietnam War, they're burning the flag or whatever have you. That's a protest. We not we not protesting. We try to get we we try to protest. We want our reparations. We want the debt due schedule. You know what I mean? So we yeah. can't. How you want to protest something that they owe you? It don't make no sense. You know, and they don't get that. You know, and here's the funny thing. The, the, the Trump people are so I, look. I got to give it to the right, right. I'm sorry, I got to give it to because they they because we let the Republicans take the American flag, so they wrap themselves in the American flag. But they, you understand, they got the Confederate flag and they still ride rolling with the American flag. Now they got three flags: the Confederate flag, the American flag, and the Trump flag. <laughs> yeah. Now, now by now Biden and Kamala, they can't get a flag because then the people say, "Oh, you just biting off for of Trump." And flags are very important. People understand that whole thing. It comes from the whole Nazi thing, man. This, your standard is what it is. And what the first thing you come and what they, they the Spanish plant, plant their flag on this thing. This is ours. Boom. You plant a flag. That's your standard. You know, there's the problem. You know, we got to get all this stuff. We got, you know, they got people got to People just got to just calm. I want to say but my friend like to say, calm down, calm down. No way. You, you'll get it sooner or later. You know, but but then plus you have a lot of pimps. You know all these people say, oh we we this people like in Cobra and all of this is knock whatever these people are. They say, oh well, we've been doing reparations for years. No, you ain't. You've been talking reparations for years. I, w- I was with Queen Mother Moore too. So what? You've been talking reparations, <laughs> but you ain't got nothing done. Blah blah blah. And you know now they're trying to set it up so when they set up these reparations committee, they can get paid. So they're grifting. They scamming. <laughs> oh, you know? but it's so all gonna come out in the wash. Store, right? Uh, say again. I said you're gonna be at the door with the velvet rope. You just can't come in. <laughs> velvet rope. Okay, man. No, we talked way too long, man. Uh, well, you know what did. I'm saying, though. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Look, we got to do this again. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe one time we'll have a, like a two-hour conversation. Who knows? Yeah. This was this. I I could keep on going. We could do the Joe Rogan thing, you know. Where I, I, you know, you know me. You want you want to talk for four hours? Fine with me. Okay, yeah. I, I got my compression going. I can put this up. There's no worries, you know. Okay, Speaking man. of Joe, like that that um, interview he did with um, James Nestor. Oh. <laughs> like I'm still listening to it. Like, oh, I listen. To, oh man, see, you got you got the good you got the book you got the good the 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 book breath. Did you get it? Yeah, I got the audio book. Oh, Plus, audio the book. audio book has like the techniques. Yeah, and someone guides you through the techniques. Oh, good, good, yeah. And and I did get your um your link mm-hmm. to the website with all the videos in there. Okay, which is interesting because Dr. Wild, right? Andrew Wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had a um an audio book of his like for years, and he he has some breathing techniques in there too. Did you did you open that? You remember that? Did I give you that one and say, look at the you go to the you go go to the my posting rather go to my in the show notes of a thing that I did. I said go to this thing at, at the one twenty eight mark. Yeah. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that one. You gotta go, man. 
We talk about that next one. That's Bitcoin, man. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? When I said, you, you know what I'm saying? You see, it is. talking about the. Um, this is about the brother talking about the VR and stuff with Bitcoin? No, no, no. Look. It, the, the, oh man, what was the name of that thing? I don't know. Man, I put these things up so much. It was no less than a week ago. Okay, I'll find it. I'll find it. The, in the show notes, right? Okay. I clearly okay. say... All I got to do is look in the notes. I'll find it. Yeah, it's, it's Kaiser TV. It's Max Kaiser TV. Oh, okay. Got it. And it's this, it's this Asian woman talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is black, but it's, it will blow you away. I say oh, go. Okay. To, I gotta watch that then. I say go to the one twenty eight mark because for those three minutes you can you say what, but then you can re- listen to her whole thing of when she talks about Bitcoin. It's amazing, and she talks about the blackness of Bitcoin. It's uh because you you, you know you you know well you you really already know. But look, you have to understand everything comes from black. So every yeah. color is in black. What she was saying, you know, because uh, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert, they do, they're doing this thing called the orange pill. You know, not the red pill, not the blue pill. It's the orange pill, right? And yeah. she was saying, no, everything comes from black. <laughs> Even your orange <laughs> comes from black. And the way she talks is like, because she's Asian, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't have any, she doesn't really know how to control. She doesn't have no swagger. So she's just getting excited and just going crazy. You know what I mean? Oh, you got to check this out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, I'm not talking, you know, on either side. I'm just stating the facts. But the thing is, I think it's, it's, it's she, see, Max Kyle, they got this thing, the Orange Pill broadcast, right? I think it's the second episode they did. It's, it's episode two. Episode, in fact, episode two and episode three, I think both of those are really great. If you look at that for, for Bitcoin, well, but just Max, just check it out. Just say, like, go, go to Orange Pill. Don't worry about the first episode so much. But I think it's two and three. Those two episodes are amazing. The two guests he has on, they are amazing. Unbelievable. You know. But this sister, man, I'm calling her sister, I mean, this Asian sister, man. She like hitting it, man. You listen to that, you go like, what? The world, look, the world has changed. People don't understand. The world has changed. And 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 and, I, and the big boys don't even know it yet. White supremacy, it's over. Stick a fork in it, or the, 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 the Trump Biden, all that. it's over. It's done. People just don't know it yet. It takes an inertia. You know what it is? Just like we're talking right now, certain things that we said. Remember, I was talking uh, last week. I was talking about you know, uh, them. They should um, how do you say? They should uh, 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 you know, show a ballot how to vote down ballot. You know, yeah. well, the guy that was on just last just last night, he said the same thing to her. So what I'm trying to say is, I don't have to. What I'm trying to say, as soon as you put something out there, it's out there already. Other people are doing it. You're not the most. You know, there's no special thing. That's what I learned about myself. I'm no special person on the planet. You know what I mean? But there's other people who do more profound than me. And people, and it's, if it's in the ether, you know what I mean? It's just going. It's percolating, and everybody's getting it at the same time. Certain people are just bringing it down differently. It's bringing it down differently. There was this guy that Joe Rogan did on his thing. There's this white guy. He's he's hooked up with this black guy, and the white guy was explaining to Joe Rogan ADOS, and he did it perfectly. And his new Spotify thing. So oh, okay. it's really it's a, so I'm trying to say the more allies, the more people understand ADOS, then these people, these people that's grifting, they're not going to stand a yeah. chance. I I, I say that I like to go slow and steady wins the race. By the time next month hit and people understand what bad down ballot is and how to work it, you know, you watch. There's going to be a sea change. You know, just just like you know, these people, like Jimmy Dore, like this Kyle Kalinsky, all these people, they they don't they don't talk ADOS. They keep on trying to do this. They're trying to save the Democrat Party, right? But they don't know. And they say, "Yeah, Nina Turner is going to be our person." Blah 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 blah. They they they, they still do their identity politics. They just think it's more progressive identity, right? Like that. In fact, people. I think. Um, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, Killer Mike. He went and talked to the Georgia governor, who's Republican. Yeah, we talked to everybody. And my thing is like uh, when they say uh, uh, need, they want need to turn in twenty twenty four. Oh yeah, fine. Uh, what's your what's your position on ADOS? What's your position on reparations? That's all I want. I don't care what color you are. What's your reparations thing? My issue. I have two. I only have two issues: reparations and the rails and Amtrak. That's my only two issues. <laughs> I don't have no other issues. Because you like you like trade. That's it. <laughs> I'm a two issue man. I don't have to go no. I don't care about Medicare for all. I don't care about none of that stuff. Two issues. 
Reparations, schedule a debt due, reparations, or reparative justice, like I like to say, reparative justice. I'm trying to get people to say reparative justice because, you know, everybody using that 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 uh, that reparations thing, that's going to be played out. You know how language goes. They're going to co-opt that. I want to see how they're going to co-opt reparative justice. How are you going to co-opt reparative justice? Let that roll off your tongue. See how, they, see how long it's going to take to try to co-opt that. Can't do it. Black man, you know me. I'm there. I'm on the front line. I'm before the front line. I'm a scout. <laughs> I'm 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 the Kia. I'm I'm the Kia in Black Panther. You know who's the one who really survives and has the ear to everybody that does them and been all over the world? Yeah, it's the spy. I'm the Kia. Everybody wants yeah. to kill Margaret. They want to be the king. They want to be I don't know the mama, a koi. They want to be like I'm the Kia. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Okay, man. Thank you for letting me right. rant. Let me let me rant, man, because I just had to get that that thing, man. There are some people that just piss me off so much, man. I'm peeved, and maybe my jaw will go down because I don't look good. But just, yeah, I do. I look like you know I got the I got the swollen jaw, man. Take another week for it to go down. I'll see what happens. I don't care. All right, man. I'll check yeah. you. Just one last thing. Sure. Okay. Um, with the teeth. Mm. It was funny because the teeth thing. Brought me back to breathe. Mm, yes. yes. You remember? Yes. You know how they were talking about um, yep. the structure of faces and stuff like that? That's right. At one time, it was like, oh, okay, so it's not totally lost, is it? I asked the doctor about that. It wasn't on tape. I said, well, can the bones go back? And he said no, but he was like waffering on it. You know what I mean? So I don't think he knows. In fact, I recommend that he get that book and I get that book and read it. He probably won't. But you know, I have to see him next month anyway. I'll keep on hammering him, make sure he reads it. You know? Yeah. Like, I know yeah. that they never took out my tonsils. Good. But I've always heard from these dentists like your tonsils are huge. It's like you got a lot of room back there. <laughs> they never took yeah, out my tonsils either. Because the they're like, we need to make room. You know, but take out some teeth and stuff like that to make room for for um. Cause it's very crowded back there. Mm. But that made me think of Bree too when he talks about how the jawline and stuff is really tight and and it's you know that's why the teeth they start doing the extractions and all of that mm. because of that. And I was like, oh well, you know, I had a wide face anyway, so I'm like, yeah, well. Mm. Yeah, you do. Hey, but, hey look, man, I, I'm, I'm trying to get my stuff. But I'm all right. I mean, my tonsils were never taken out either. I think they just they just shriveled up themselves. I don't know. Yeah. Because I don't really think they're supposed to be taken out. I don't think nothing's supposed to be taken out. You know, I don't want, I don't, I don't mark up my body. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't do no tattoos. I don't do no piercings. I don't do nothing like that. You know what I mean? But I, I do the Dick Gregory thing. Dick Gregory once said, he said, you got so many holes. God gave you those holes. You don't need no more. You know, that, that's right. The, in fact, the only thing, the only thing I am into, I shouldn't say it this way, but I, I do, I do appreciate scarification. But I had a natural scarification when I was running through the jungles of Belize. This, this thing yeah. ripped, ripped my arm. You know what I mean? I got these three yeah. things on my arm, and I had the scars for it for a long time. That was scarification. Plus, then I have this other scar on my hand with my brother, my older brother. We was, we was sword fighting. And he, we was the only one sword. Right? He had the sword. I had the hilt. That the kind of thing. And his somehow the tip of his. The tip of his, his sword hit the hit the tip of the hilt, and it got into my into my hand, and there's a mm. scar. There's a scar there, and that's I've had that scar all my life. So that's my scarification. You know, it's yeah. a, it's my a, scarification is uh, I was a little kid, maybe like three, maybe four, and my brother was ironing and stuff, and I guess I must have crossed over the the um the cord, mm. and the iron fell on my hand, and, and now I have like a. Uh, a scar that looks like the boot of Italy on one of my knuckles. <laughs> there you go. Like I said, if it come natural, that's it, man. I don't like this, uh, you know, this, you know, I'm going to make, you're gonna be, I'm going to be a, a billboard, an advertising bill for, 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 for Jennifer, you know, <laughs> God, God, all on your, or, you know, whatever these people do. Okay, man. Like I said, right. we, we can keep going. All right. I'll check you next week. And that, in, right. fact, in fact, I ain't going to say, I'm gonna. I, 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 of course, I'll have some topic, but you know, have a topic, and like we can talk as long as you want, cause I ain't got nothing to do, man. You know, I'm. I'm just. I'm. You know, I think I'm talking now because I'm trying to exercise my my mouth, make sure my jaw is all right. I can still talk <laughs> yeah. about teeth day. All right. Okay, Maybe man. Next week we can get into the book a little. Uh, which book? Breathe. A little bit of breathe. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because now. 
I'm at, the, I'm at the, uh, you know, what I did is I got the whole thing now. Now I'm going very slow on the, the last, I'm, I'm on the last chapter, right? But I'm also, yeah. uh, but, you know, I'm also doing my, and, oh, and plus I got the book Somantics. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm using Somantics and Breathe at the same time. Techniques oh, okay. uh, combined. Because, you, you know, you know, you know, um, uh, the, the, the Nat Ministry, she's into Somantics. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I'm telling you, for when I was taking, look, when I was taking Capoeira, I was thinking, you know, what's the what's the two best forms to take? I think if you took if you took Wing Chun, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and Capoeira, well, Capoeira only when you're young, but but those those are that's, that's a deadly combination right there, you know. Yeah. Now I'm I'm not even going to get into uh 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 uh, uh, uh the Thai thing, the the the, the Thai boxing or whatever it is, but uh so those two things. But now I'm also I'm also reading this book right now. Uh, the people know Thomas Thomas Franks. It's my political thing. So I'm reading that right now, so I'm I'm uh, so I'm going through that, but I'm going through this fairly I don't say fairly quickly, but it's really interesting. It's very interesting. I'm going to fairly quickly because uh, because I want to get finished with it because I'm going to get a Great Palace book. Um, I think I'm just going to do. I have the rest of the month to read this, even though I'm going to probably go with it rather quickly. Uh, but uh, in fact, you like this book? They got cartoons of old man. They got the very interesting how how to, how to, uh, how do you say the the the, the powers that be. They, they, uh, <laughs> they came together just to, to to make sure that 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 the workers, the black people and white people, wouldn't get together. You know, it was really. In fact, I did a, I did a, a, a my latest posting on on this. I talk about this book and I read a little bit from from this from this book. It's kind of interesting. You know, they just don't want they they don't want the down trying to come together. So, you know, it's one yeah. co corporate system. Like like for instance, I'm sorry. Let me keep on going. Wait a second. Here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody keeps on saying that Donald Trump is a, 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 a white supremacist, whatever they say he is. No, you idiots. He like Biden. He's a corporatist. They're all corporatists. People need to stop calling people names. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, he might be a white. He might be egging on a white supremacist. That's sure, surely. You know, I'm sure. You know, but guess what? He ain't a white supremacist like Joe Biden was a white supremacist. <laughs> yeah, he's his own style. You know, because the guys in Eastland and all those people, they're the ones that started this. They're the ones that, that, that did the, the, the whole Confederate flag and all the rest of them stuff. So what I'm trying to say is Biden comes from white supremacist stock. Um, um, Trump comes from corporatist stock. Yeah. Well, well, uh, well uh, 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 basically, Biden is like what do we call it? Like a neo-corporatist because he came from white supremacist stock. Right to become a corporatist, um, um, Trump came from basically a real estate stock to become a corporatist, and then when they made, made corporations a, a living entity, whatever they, whatever the Supreme Court did, everybody wants to be a corporatist because they can hide into that to to, to, to to fleece the company, to fleece the country. I don't think that people see that. Because people are stupid. They keep on with this identity part. Oh, we got to have a woman. We got to have a woman director. We got to have a woman vice president. We got to have a woman this. We got to have a black that. You know, that's how we got in trouble with Barack Obama. You know, he's clearly, he's clearly a conservative. He's like, you know, <laughs> he's Ronald Reagan. <laughs> yeah, Reagan, man. Man. So I don't know, these these folks, man, they don't know what they speak. That's why I like to concentrate on, like I said, my two issues. ADOS is fine with me for a political head. I don't have to worry about this other stuff. I can play fun and games with these people. I mess with them all the time. These people like the Kyle Kalinskis, they keep on saying that they're trying to get their identity politics, you know, the immigrants. Blah, blah, blah. I would say, look, fine. I'm I'm all for immigration. Fine. As long as you put ADOS in front of the queue. Whatever you're gonna get these folks that's coming now, you no, know, guess what? We get it first, you know. We're in front of the queue. <laughs> that's, that's it, you know. You're not gonna leave us out, you know, that kind of thing, you know. And and that's that's what I'm talking about because they won't address it. They refuse to deal with ADOS. All yeah. these so-called, you know, these 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 what do you call them, these progressive media? No, nah, they're not they they're they're not they're they're trying to yeah, they say, Well, I'm not for no, I'm not for this, I'm not for that, I'm not ah, they're perpetrating a fraud. Man, let me talk Chicago yeah. now. So anyway. You know, but they're for racial justice, though. <laughs> they're for racial justice. Well, fine. They can be for racial justice. I want reparative justice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. you, they want racial justice, which is a farce, because racism, everybody knows racial stuff 
is you know that's that that's what it was. You know, it's you know it's a it, it, it's a it's a it's a construct. It's a right. it's a false construct, and so yeah. they they spin it on this false construct. Look, oh, let me go. Let me say this one because this is on my head right now. You know, you know, somebody was pointing out that the Nazis got themselves from got the, 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 they they're reading this book on Cass right now, the, 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 the Breaking Brown Book Club, and what she found out is that the Nazis got themselves. They basically studied Jim Crow. So Nazism really is Jim Crow. German style, okay? <laughs> Think about it. So basically, yeah, yeah, I can see that. and now you got these white supremacists or these neo-Nazis, right? So what they're basically doing, they're still doing Jim Crow. So what happens, it's like it's almost like minstrel. It's like you imitated the imitation of something. You're not even original. So, so all these neo-Nazis running around today, they're like, they're basically imitating the Hitler kind of stuff, you know, the, the Nazi kind of stuff, which is imitating Jim Crow kind of stuff. You see, yeah, and, and 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 for me, and for me, then you have something like, like say for instance, this like say apartheid, right? If, if, if people don't understand the English, this whole thing about the, the, the taking people out of the schools and, and taking them whatever have you, and giving them pass laws or whatever have you. That started with the English in Canada with the with, with the autochthonous people in Canada, and they brought that to Namibia. And so this whole thing is always you can go almost you can almost go back to. When when they did this whole racial profile, whatever it is, you must go back to let to, to the eighteen uh, hundreds, mid mid to late eighteen hundreds, and everything is right there. And one of the things that, that I like about reparations when they have to do this study, they're going to find out all these people. This is this country was was it's white supremacist country. That's why I brought this guy. This guy um, you should check him out. Uh, his name is uh, Jeffrey Robinson. Try to look up Jeffrey Robinson. I got him up on here now. Yeah, check him out. It's amazing. This cat is bad. This is the dude, woo man. You hear woo hoo, hoo, lordy be. You can't. People can't take it. White people gotta back down. The neo Nazis gotta. Everybody back down. When he talk, they backing down. They making a film right now. You know the Kunstler girls. They got a film company. They, you know Emily and Sarah. They they making a film on this guy. And I'm gonna support it. You know what I mean? In fact, I wrote them a little note. So I got to get there, you know. I'm a, I'm gonna support it, you know. Then I got my project going, so we'll we'll see what happens, you know. I get I get with Michi X. Hey, things are happening within the next year. This thing, this whole this COVID, everything is making things like people gotta be intro, introspective. Hey, hey, listen to listen to listen to the brother using a big word. Whoa, hey, introspective, a little new age word. Hey. <laughs> Okay, man. Anything else? Nah, I'm good. You good? Okay, I'm I'm excellent, man. We're not gonna talk any more about about drawings or anything like that. You keep on working what you got to work on. Like I said, what we got so far is good. When I get to New York, man, we got to mock up something um, because I need to get uh, uh, some kind of mock up of of the third infinity or something. You know, it does, I mean, it doesn't have to be on a t shirt. I would, in fact, you know what I would like it on. What? Uh, 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 either a a a, a, ben, a, a, a a blank bandana or a towel or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a like a wiping towel. You know what I mean? I don't want to say towel. You know, you know, a, a, just like a bandana to start with. I don't, you know what? I don't want to market it on t-shirts or anything like that. Or even just I don't know. I don't know. Some we got to talk about it. You know? Okay. Because I because I can put I put some money towards it. Maybe we can make up something. You know? Yeah. All right. I'll check you. All right. All right. Okay. Later.